uh, we wanted to try and make it a uh, miniature wow moment. So as soon as you enter the library, you realize it's a bit different in the terms of layout. Because the entire library has been put onto its side. So the door, of course, closes behind you so you don't see out into the void. But the entire area, the entire library has been flipped. And so all the clutter has fallen to the ground. There's also a lot of floating objects that you're allowed to use as a path. And uh, the programmers made a uh, zero gravity volume mm -hmm. that will be filling the, uh, the ceiling area right there. <coughs> and so you actually see the bookshelves and the books all floating around. It just hasn't been implemented yet. Our main concern was uh, creating a path for the player to travel. And so that's what I've been trying to prototype out. And so the final product will be a large play area built out of small objects you walk across. If you fall, the zero gravity hits you and you kind of get floated back up onto the uh, path. Um, some of the thicker areas, so not the books, but things like uh, sofas, that's where the statue will actually be. And it becomes kind of like a, uh, a turret game for the statue shooting at you from this floating area. And you need to get him to hit certain globes that are across the room. Once you hit all four, there'll be four globes, and once you hit them all, the uh, exit right there, the path is built to it, and you're allowed to escape into the uh, entryway for the final boss battle. Which yeah, so, um, so after we walk through all these uh, three rooms back to the entryway, the player will go back to the entryway again, and the statue is still chasing him, and then the player will enter the final area. It's not, it's not built yet. Uh, it's, yeah, I think they need to go into build and um, it's the final area, and also it's the final boss fight. Actually, it's it's not it's not really intense, but you have to make, have the player. I mean, have to say you should go to the, the gold store in our first entryway, and not that end <coughs> story. We let let us let us have some script and open there, happen there, yeah. In the ghost store, I don't know if it's already been said, but in the entryway, uh, that main door has been locked the entire game. It's going to look very demonic, and that's what we're calling a ghost door. And okay. once you get there at the very end uh, and have it open, it basically sucks everything out into this void area. Uh -huh. We're hinting at it maybe being hell, um, and that's what the end of the game would be, is yeah. like having the statue get sucked out through that, that void. Okay. The, series, the series of Black Ghost Door will change based on the chapter. So when, when you progress chapter, you will, still, you will always see a Black Ghost Door become a little bit Weird. So we'll have to draw player attention, like maybe I can do something later for this door. And then actually the player will realize everything up in the kill room. And when they when they lead the when when they lead the statue to the to the to the final area, they are trying to open that door by use the particle thing. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and then it connects to the endings, more some similar they may start everybody in, they have some ending. Yeah. And like that's the game. Or something. <laughs> like that sequence. <laughs> So yeah. Anybody think of anything that we missed? Um, as far as you want to talk about anything on the programming art side? Programming side, most of the systems are completed, uh, and most of it now is just polish and uh, making some extra features for the LDs. Uh, just knows it'll make their lives better and design these levels as fast as possible. Okay. Um, a bunch of us have reserved time, like at least five to ten hours, just so they can come over here and say, "Hey, I need this to make." the save system that we're really polishing right now, so hopefully, not hopefully, but within the next couple of days, uh, if you die, you'll load your last checkpoint, and so there's various checkpoints throughout the game that will have the player be able to go back to if they die. So. Okay. Is walking on the books going to feel just like walking on any other surface? Uh, like in terms of controlling the actual player? No, just the actual physics of it. <coughs> there a way to make that feel like it? I'm not, that's a humongous wish list question. But is it just going to feel like I'm walking on the floor? It'll feel like you're walking on the floor right now. That's cool. I actually hadn't seen that yet, so that's my first time as well. Okay. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Surprise! Yeah, right now it's just 
people as they're walking on the floor, they feel the same. I can rotate them slightly in the end, but I'm scared of rotating them. The player will be just knocked off. I kind of want to matinee them so they kind of move well, we up can and down. Do. Yeah, exactly. Bit, but I don't want to use that as a uh, physics because that's fine. physics, they can go wrong. You might exactly. just take a step and they'll just fall yeah, off. Yeah, a very easy that's way fine. to do that is just a blocking volume would be your path, and then the actual K actor would be floating right beneath that blocking volume. So you would look like you're walking on floating books, but... Uh, it would feel the same as walking. If it's if you default to what it is naturally with the other levels, that's fine. It would be a very triple H deal if you could do something like that, either visually or through physics. All right. Just because when you see it, it seems natural, that it would seem different. Yeah. Right now, for me, it doesn't look good. Yeah. A um, couple things. Um, what's the uh, is the notebook going to stay the same? Are you guys going to redesign it, or what are you guys' thoughts on that? We're deciding, me and Mark right now are deciding between a couple of options. We already have a replacement notebook, like the layout worked out. However, whether or not we're going to try to make a 3D model is the question. Okay. We could certainly make it to 2D and it won't be that difficult, but we would like to do something kind of interesting, especially since we're probably going to use the notebook also for the main menu. Okay. So Worst case fallback is leave the visual changes and it's 2D would be fine. But if you could do something 3D and slick, but. You could always, two days, not, I don't think it's going to kill you. We're considering it's just the time yeah. management. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then the the menu screen, I know that's not done, but is that is not, it, what you guys want to do for that been thought of? I think that's Visually? Uh, basically, oh, okay. Okay. basically, when the game would start, you would have the notebook lying on um, one of the the end tables in the entryway, and you'd be looking at it, and you could see the background of the table under under the notebook, right? Uh -huh. And then you'd be able to start the game, and what you would do is you'd just lift your head, and you'd be in the entryway. Okay. And that that's basically it. Okay. Um, yeah. And then that would, if that was like a 3D object, that would be like a really cool wow moment almost all, also. But for right now, we yeah, we're just trying to think about if it, is it in scope. And, okay. But... My risk assessment, just with my producer hat on right yeah. this second, would be, I have no doubt you guys will get those uh, puzzles and maze levels finished. Yeah. Um, optimally would be to get those done and allow yourself some margin to play test outside yourself, because then when you reach alpha, you could then up it again as far as poly. I mean, that's ideally what I would be looking at right. as a producer. Um, but if you got everything in and it kind of functioned on those levels, which I know it'll do more than that, obviously, but that would be min bar. My high bar would be allow some margin for even further polish and refinement on the levels that aren't finished. Okay. If you haven't already built that in, that would... I don't see any major risks unless, what are your guys' thoughts on, what are, what, as a, what are your big blockers, do you feel? Not as individuals, but just as a project. Scrum, the wiki. Scrum wiki. Um, no, like, uh... <laughs> no, I mean, it's legit. The way, the way that we're saving the game right now, just to give you a brief overview of that, is we have the game, each level is broken into different instances. I don't know if I uh -huh. explained this to you already. No, you did. Yeah. Okay. And so um, I spent like six hours yesterday trying to implement the first save point. Um, now that I know how to do it, it's going to be right. much, much quicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's... It was a learning curve, and now you can kind of stamp your feet. You have to put the kismet in the different instances and make sure it all runs once, and then when you load the game, it doesn't run again. And mm -hmm. it's just conceptually understanding how that works is it's a learning curve. But, yeah, um, that that might be... I mean, localization is going to take a while, but we've already planned for that as well. Yeah. Uh, two Wednesdays from now, yeah, we're going to yeah, be... Yeah, they told me what's going on. So. So that's why I'm not asking. <laughs> um, and then audio and everything, you're pretty well, you guys tracking there? Yeah, I've emailed all the the composers, and they know <coughs> the, that we're getting everything in by the 22nd. Okay. And so that should all be done. Okay. So... Yeah, and it, I mean, if you they work and you guys think they're perfect, and that's fine. But I mean, there's going to be stuff, obviously, right, that you didn't think of or player behavior. Just allow yourself some time for that. 
because then I think, it, don't get me wrong, I think you guys are in a rock solid place. So I'm talking to you more in terms as if I would, we were in shop in the industry. That, these would be what I would be telling you, is that we can really reach a, yeah, I think you guys can reach a true alpha actually. I really do, which I don't think I've said. <laughs> So that's, your hats <laughs> off, man. Seriously, I think you guys are in a good place. So I think everything will definitely be there. Um, you guys feel pretty cool with like how the puzzles are coming together and or are you still kind of really iterate? And yeah, that's another thing, make sure you iterate on that stuff. Quite yeah. Bit. We had planned on trying to be gameplay complete, uh, at least for Alpha <clears throat> by tomorrow, but we have two days of wiki stuff for LDs so that we're kind of pushing it back to next week. Okay. But I mean, it was definitely, Talking to, I've been talking to a couple of the teams in C19 across the hall uh, for testing, so we may do a little bit of swapping work. Yeah, and ideally, and this would be more, you guys, I mean, producers maybe, or whoever wants to volunteer, I'd try to get, it's when you can, I'd try to get out of the guild hall. Yeah. There's always a bias and a preconception. That's true. So. I've raised heard about it. I'm just saying there's always a guild hall fog or lens, lens if you will, unless they really have just been out.